So today let's study another method of nanomaterial synthesis which is chemical vapor deposition that is CVD. This method follows bottom-up approach of synthesis. Now to those who don't know what bottom-up approach is, I suggest you to watch our previous video about nanofabrication and synthesis of nanomaterials which will help you to understand the approaches. Okay then coming back to CVD. Actually CVD is a generic name for a group of processes that involve depositing a solid material from a gaseous phase. It is conveniently used to obtain coatings of a variety of inorganic or organic materials. It, live, it is widely used in industry because of relatively simple instrumentation, ease of processing, possibility of depositing different types of materials and economical viability. So let's dive into today's video to study in detail about this CVD process. Firstly, let's see its definition. Chemical vapor deposition CVD may be defined as the deposition of a solid on a heated surface from a chemical reaction in the vapor phase. It belongs to the class of the vapor transfer processes which is atomistic in nature. Here atomistic means that the deposition species are atoms or molecules or combination of these. Chemical vapor deposition CVD results from the chemical reaction of gaseous precursors at a heated substrate to yield a fully dense deposit. That means in this process we have heated substrate on the surface of which the chemical reactions between the gaseous precursors takes place and which ultimately leads to the deposition of the material. Okay. CVD is a chemical process used to produce high purity, high performance solid materials. This technique is suitable for the manufacture of coatings, powders, fibers and monolithic components. This technique is often used in many thin film applications. By varying the experimental conditions like substrate material, substrate temperature, composition of the reaction gas mixture, total pressure, gas flows, etc. Materials with different properties can be grown. That means just by varying these parameters, we can obtain different materials with desired properties. Okay. Now let's look at its instrumentation and understand the working concept behind CVD. Firstly, talking about instrumentation, a typical CVD system consists of the following parts. First, Sources of gases and their feed lines. Mass flow controllers for metering the gases into the system. A reaction chamber or reactor. A system for heating up the wafer on which the film is to be deposited. And lastly, temperature sensors. So, as you can see, this is a CVD reactor. It is uh, equipped with the gas sources and feed lines for the gases. It has also a pressure sensor equipped to it and as you can see there are heating sources at both the ends of the reactor. Inside the reactor there is a quartz tube on which we place our substrate and this is how the CVD reactor looks. Now let's have a look at its working. Basic CVD process however can be considered as transport of reactant vapor or reactant gas towards the substrate kept at some high temperature where the reactant cracks into different products which diffuse on the surface, undergo some chemical reaction at appropriate site, nucleate and grow to form the desired material film. So this can be understood with this diagram. Firstly, the reactant gases enter the uh, reactor and travel towards the substrate which is placed at high temperature. Then these reactants crack into different products which diffuse on the surface of the substrate where the chemical reactions between these reactants take place and finally the desired material is deposited on the surface of this substrate. So now I think the mechanism must be clear to you with this explanation. Moving forward, let's understand exactly how the process of CVD is carried out. So, different steps involved in CVD process are Firstly, 
A predefined mix of reactant gases and diluent inert gases are introduced at a specified flow rate into the reaction chamber. Then the gas molecules move towards the wafer substrate and adder. This is called adsorption. Then the reactants get adsorbed on the surface of the substrate. The gas molecules chemically react forming a solid that adheres to the wafer surface that is the reactants undergo chemical reactions with the substrate to form the film. And finally the gaseous byproducts of the reactions are removed from the wafer surface called desorption and evacuated from the reaction chamber. The diagram here depicts the different steps involved in CVD process. So firstly let me tell you what is what. So the dark green uh, circles indicate the gaseous reactant species that is our gaseous reactants. The blue color circles are the adsorbed intermediates. The orange circles are our solid product and the faint greens are the gaseous byproducts. This is the boundary layer and this is our heated substrate. So what happens is firstly there is diffusion in of the reactants through the boundary layer. Then there is adsorption of uh, reactants on substrate which is shown by this faint uh, blue color and then the chemical reaction takes place uh, and finally the solid product is deposited on the substrate which is shown by this orange color and then there is desorption of adsorbed spaces which is shown by this uh, faint green color and finally the byproducts are diffused out uh, of the chamber. So this is how the entire CVD process is carried out. During the process of chemical vapor deposition, the reactant gases not only react with the substrate material at the vapor surface or very close to it but also in gas space in the reactor's atmosphere. That means the reaction not only takes place at the surface uh, at the substrate level but also takes place in the gas space that is above the substrate in this uh, empty space in the reactor. So the reactions that take place at the substrate surface are known as heterogeneous reactions. So the reactions that take place at the surface of this substrate are known as heterogeneous reactions. Heterogeneous reactions selectively occur on the heated surface of the wafer where they create good quality films. So as I have showed you in the previous video, heterogeneous reaction that take place on the surface of the substrate uh, help in creating good quality films. Reactions that take place in the gas phase are known as homogeneous reactions. That means the reactions that take place in the space above the substrate are known as homogeneous reactions. Homogeneous reactions occur before the gas molecules reach the wafer surface. They are referred to as gas phase reactions. This aggregates the depos depositing material which adhere to the surface poorly and at the same time form low density films with lots of defects. So in short, Heterogeneous reactions are much more desirable than homogeneous reactions during chemical vapor deposition. So obviously as heterogeneous reactions give rise to good quality films, uh, this type of reactions are desirable rather than homogeneous reactions which give rise to low density films during the chemical vapor deposition. The reaction rate can be changed by changing concentration of the reactant. As more reactants become available, the reaction rate increases. So if we want to increase the reaction rate, then we have to increase the uh, amount of reactants. So this was all about the CVD processing. Moving on further, let's see the types of CVD. There are number of forms of CVD that are widely used. These processes differ in the means by which chemical reactions are initiated like for example activation process and also process conditions. So depending upon uh, process conditions there can be different types of CVD and which are they? Let's see. A reactor is said to be hot wall if it uses a heating system 
that heats up not only the wafer but the walls of the reactor itself. That means hot wall reactor is where where the substrate as well as the walls of the reactor are heated simultaneously and that's why the name hot wall. So an example of which is radiant heating from resistant resistance heated coils. So this is the diagram of hot wall uh, CVD. So as you can see there is gas introduction facility and as it is shown in this diagram there is heating source at both the ends of the reactor so which helps in heating up of the substrate as well as the walls of the CVD. In hot wall reactors films are deposited on the walls as well as on the substrate. So this type of reactor requires frequent wall cleaning. Now moving on further, cold wall reactors use heating systems that minimize the heating up of the reactant reactor walls while the wafer is being heating up, heated up. An example of which is heating via IR lamps inside the reactor. So as you can see in this diagram, the heating source is only at the substrate level and not on the walls. So because in cold wall CVD only the wafer is being heated and walls of the CVD are not being heated continuously. So this is cold wall CVD. Another way of classifying CVD reactors is by basing it on the range of their operating pressure. Uh, that means depending on the range of operating pressures being used we can classify CVD process into different types and which are they? First is atmospheric pressure CVD that is APCVD. APCVD reactors operate at the atmospheric pressure and are therefore the simplest in design. So as the name suggests uh, atmospheric pressure CVD operates at the atmospheric pressure. Second is low pressure CVD that is LPCVD. LPCVD reactors operate at the medium va vacuum that is in the range between 30 to 250 pascal and higher temperature than APCVD reactors. So uh, LPCVD reactors or CVD reactors operate at medium vacuum and higher temperature than this atmospheric pressure CVD. Third is plasma enhanced CVD that is PECVD. PECVD reactors also operate under low pressure but do not completely depend on thermal energy to accelerate the reaction processes. So as we see uh, as we saw in LPCVD this uh, process is initiated or accelerated by higher temperature but in plasma enhanced CVD this CVD reactor operates under low pressure but doesn't depend on the thermal energy to accelerate the react to thermal energy to accelerate the reaction process okay they also transfer energy to the reactant gases by using an rf induced glow discharge the glow discharge used by a pecvd reactor is created by applying an rf field to a low pressure gas creating free electrons within the discharge region so these were the different types of CVD processes. Next moving on to its advantages and disadvantages. Firstly let's read out its advantages. It can be applied to a wide variety of base materials including glass, ceramics, metals and metal alloys. It can be used for coatings or freestanding structures. It can simultaneously coat multiple components with the help of CVD, materials can be deposited with very high purity. Uh, it can withstand exposure to extreme temperature variation and this method has relatively high deposition rates. So these were few of its advantages. CVD also has a number of disadvantages. One of the primary disadvantages lies in the properties of the precursors. First, ideally the precursors need to be volatile at near room temperatures. CVD precursors can also be highly toxic, example of which is NiCO4, explosive, example of which is P2H6 or corrosive, example of which is SiCl4.
the byproducts of cvd reactions can also be hazardous uh, examples are co h2 or hf some of the precursors especially the metal organic precursors can be quite expensive so these were few of the disadvantages of cvd process now lastly let's move on to its application part cvd processes are used on wide range of industrial components aircraft uh, for indus automotive industry for gas cookers and also to resist various attacks by carbon oxygen and sulfur so here i have listed some important applications let's read them out one by one first for surface modification to prevent or promote adhesion for photoresist adhesion for semiconductor wafers for memes coating to reduce stiction for bio memes and bio sensor coating to reduce drift in device performance also to promote bio compatibility between natural and synthetic materials and also for anti corrosive coatings so these were few important applications of cvd process so with this we are done studying cvd and i hope it was helpful to you to those who are new to our channel and seeing our video for first time please subscribe to this channel so that you can learn about more such concepts from nanotechnology and to get notified about our new video do hit the bell icon after pressing the subscribe button also if you enjoyed today's learning then do like this video and also don't forget to share this video with those who would find it helpful okay then until next time be happy and keep learning